Hello, it's Iron here from Thames Art Gallery, and you're watching this video because you have one of our art adventure kits. This kit is full of nature-inspired activities in conjunction with the gallery's exhibition of landscape photographs by local artists Mike Blazek and Scott Taylor. Today I'm going to explain or develop an activity on drawing birds for the watercolor painting activity, and you can find this activity right in here. So I have previously uploaded a couple of videos on uh, color mixing and color theory because part of your kit you will find these pizza shaped uh, cards that explain the primary colors and mixing with secondary colors. You'll also find this color mixing challenge page and this is what it looks like when it's completed. And it is kind of handy to keep this uh, close by as a nice reference. What I'm going to look at, look at in this activity are these pages here. So you will find that you have a little photocopy of a robin. And it is has been photocopied onto a journaling uh, page that talks about if you were to go out and do some bird watching or go out on a trail or take, go to the park, uh, it asks you the, the date, the time, what the weather was like and where you were, and describe the bird and where you saw it and what it reminds you of and what you might wonder about it. So it's kind of a nice activity to get you really looking and thinking about uh, the bird and the bird and its location and where we are in our location. And the sheet I'm going to be referencing and guiding you through is this one here. So this is just a simple activity on how to draw the bird. Many um, things can look quite complicated, but most of the time what artists do is they break uh, the shapes and look for simple shapes. And this is really two circles and two directional lines, and that's how we're going to start. The next thing that we're going to look for is the directional line from the beak through the belly to the foot. So that is quite a, a much sharper uh, line, I would say maybe mm, 70 degree angle. So I'm going to draw that in right here. And I'll just pick that up to show you what I have there. Just like that. On top of the big egg, we are going to slightly overlap. Again, I'm going to ear draw again until I get it the way I want it. We're just going to make a small circle on top of our oval. Just like that. Now the small circle on top, I'm going to pretend for a minute that it's a clock and I'm going to put the hands in at quarter past three. So I'm going to go right to the center of the circle and I'm going to come out of the circle and that's going to show me uh, where my beak where my eye is going to go, because a lot of times the eye is not where we think it is. The eye is really quite central in the head in the circle, and the beak is coming out like that. So I'm just going to elaborate, and I'll just draw in the eye, and I'll just rough in the beak. And also, I learned that birds have knees, but the knees are tucked in inside the body. So I'm just going to reference my little picture. And I have a very, very basic drawing of my little bird. So the next thing we have to do is remove these directional lines. And this can be tricky because not all uh, this water this watercolor paper is, is pretty good, but some watercolor paper really doesn't appreciate and doesn't like um, your eraser marks. And you have to make sure that your eraser is clean or you end up with these big black smudges all over your work. They're not very good. So like that, I'm just coming around. And I will I like to refer to my picture a little bit here. It's a little bit dark so I can show you. I'm going to bring out the tail. Come up and Come on over the back like that. I might keep this my directional line. You can still see it, but that's kind of handy. 
So I'm going to use that to show me where the underbelly starts and the, the wing starts. The next uh, part is where this, the, the breast of the bird actually is. So it's like that. So there we go, a very simple um, and quick way of um, drawing the initial shape of your bird from two circles and two directional lines. So I will be back and to start the painting part. So we're back and what I have is the drawing of my little bird on the watercolor paper. So like I said, the watercolor paper is like a um, thirsty towel. It can take a lot of water and it won't disintegrate, it won't break down, it won't tear. Another thing I have, I have a clean bowl of water and I have a flat brush and I have a smaller round brush right here. I also am keeping uh, close by, I'm going to keep my color mixing sheet that I made before and I have my watercolor palette. Now this palette might look a little bit different from yours but I'm only going to use the same colors that you have because I'm a true believer in mixing the colors. So I'm going to use my warm yellow my cool yellow, my reds, and my blues. That's all I'm going to use. And I'm going to mix them. So the first thing, I really enjoy working wet into wet, but wet into wet can take a little bit of patience. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to do the breast of the birds. So my pencil lines are still here to guide me. They're a little bit darker than I would usually have them. Cause like I said, this is a watercolor painting and not a drawing. So what I'm looking to do here is create kind of a range of tones with this um, orangey color. And what I think I'm going to do, just I'm going to refer to my sheet and I'm going to look for something in this range here. Now, the color mixing challenge page said that it took me a cool yellow and cool red to mix this color. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come over to my palette and my cool yellow is my lemon yellow. And I have activated all of these colors again just by adding a little bit of water and letting them sort of return to um, the more moist state because we talked about before that they actually started out as liquids in tubes and we let them dry out into cakes. We want to reactivate them, we want to add water. So I've added a little bit of water to the colors I'm going to use, just plain water. And now it's easy for me to just take some cool yellow and put into the mixing, the mixing well right here. Now it always takes much, much more of a light color and very, very little of the darker color to make uh, the color mixing that we're going to do. So that really means if I'm going to find the cool red, the cool red is the red like the fire truck. It's just the tiniest amount on the very edge of my brush. I might even have too much, I might even dab it off. And I'm just going to take and mix that in with my yellow. And by mixing, we really mean mixing, we're really stirring it together. I use a lot of food metaphors, but it could be a little bit like baking. You, know, you really wanna mix that together. So I went in and I got more red, and you can see, you can always add more red, but it's very, very difficult to um, once your color is really dark, it's very hard to get it ever to lighten up. So you want to just add maybe the smallest amount of the dark color at a time. So I have a nice kind of orange, nice base color. My page is still a little bit wet. I'm just going to sort of drop that color in there. And the first thing that you're going to notice is the paint is only going to go where the page is wet. The paint will not actually move onto any of your dry paper. And this is something that we can really play with when we're doing watercolors. Now this color is quite light and quite thin and I think it may need a boost. So what I'm going to do is add a little bit more pigment. So I'm going to add a little bit more red. Now it's quite a rich color. So I'm going to keep my example right there and I'm just going to 
drop that in over the bird. I'm going to come around to the edge. I'm trying to create dimension too, so I'm going to try and keep the darker colors to the edge and leave the lighter color in the middle of the breast. So I'm just going to follow along. I'm just dotting along. You can choose to use a smaller brush if you like. This brush is perhaps just a little big for this purpose. Just like that. And then really we're just kind of waiting for it to dry. Some people like to use a hair dryer to kind of speed the process up. I'm going to swim my brush back in the water. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Kleenex because just under the beak of the bird, there's a little highlight. So the other thing we don't have in watercolors, as we talked about before, is, is, is white. So the Kleenex acts like an eraser and we can pull out the color and create a highlight just by going in while it's still wet. And even if this dries, uh, there's still an opportunity to go in with a plain, uh, plain water on your brush and pull that out a little bit. So there we have that right there. Now the next thing is we have to be a little careful not to have one wet color hit another wet color or we will get something called a bleed. So I'm going to, I think work on the back part here. Let me make this a darker color. Now it's really a grayed brown with a lot of uh, blue in it to my eye. And brown can be all the colors. So I think where I'm going to start, I'm going to start with the warm yellow. And I'm going to pull that into the mixing well. And I might pull the dark blue. And that should give me, that blue is very, very intense. A lot of young children are really good at making brown because it's kind of the motion of this, you know, all the colors all mixed together. So I'm now going to add red to that. And you can see essentially I have mud. So I've taken my three primary colors. I have uh, I chose the strong yellow, the warm yellow, the blue and the red and now I just I have a truly a muddy color. Instead of wetting my paper this time I think I'm going to, going to come in with kind of a dry brush and what this is going to do is give me more of a visible brush mark and it changes the texture. So I'm just going to come up and around the head. It's actually quite a warm brown. I could cool it down by adding more blue maybe I'll just leave it just like I onto the tail of the bird I'm just going to kind of confidently drag my my brush which is leaving most of the water on the dry page and it's going to do that and I'm going to come around to the top of the head and I maybe I'll come onto the beak very carefully try not to hit the orange and I'm going to do the eyes uh, later on And I think I'm going to uh, just let that dry for a couple of minutes. Okay, so I've gone in and I've added a few more layers to my bird. And there's something kind of interesting in just, um, it's not so much blending as letting the first layer dry and then going in and adding uh, another layer wherever you see like the bird has a darker tone here on its wing. It's not so much blending, like I said, but just adding another layer. So I have my thin brush and I've added more blue uh, to the, the dark neutral that I was working with. It's almost a, it's a very dark, kind of like a gray color now. So I'm just gonna reference my little picture right here. I'm gonna come in with this and now I'm making strokes that resemble the feathers on the bird. You can see this, and always when watercolor dries, it always dries lighter. So you get a chance to see it in the beginning and then it lightens up. And over the top of the head. Well, I was Googling about, because there's some um, questions as to whether this is a robin or a different bird. 
And according to the internet, this is a European robin. She looks a little bit different than a North American robin. It's kind of cute. I was wondering if it was deep in winter because he's really got quite a fat belly on him. So you can see too, and now I have my thin brush. I've also gone in and added, added the eye. Everything else is dry. And I can just use the very, very tip of that. And like I said, add, by adding more layers, I can get a darker line. And I can get uh, the look of feathers just by dragging my brush lightly over the top, over the back of the, over the back, I guess. I'm just going to use my brush right up on this edge and create these little hair-like lines. And maybe down here on the back, I'm just going to drag this again to create more fine lines, like a drawing line. It really adds nice texture and nice variety. I'm finding my color, if I don't keep it mixed, it likes to kind of split apart and I see the orange and I see uh, the blues it's kind of separating. So I'm just mixing that, trying to get that color that I want to keep. And up around the edge, I'm going to just shape my bird a little bit more. I'm just gonna... Sometimes it's nice to have an edge that tapers off into nothing. And we can do that by just adding a little bit of water and lightening that color up rather than a hard edge because a hard edge sometimes wants to come forward and if we're trying to make our bird look like it's realistic and in the round then we really would like to have an, an edge that really fades away. So as I've been working with this I think I've been changing the shape of the head a little bit. The head's getting a little bit bigger which does look more like the European Robin. And it makes it look kind of cuter. So I'm pretty happy with that. And again, you know, everything you do is really is a game of patience. You have to let it dry. The orange of the rest of the bird, I also added another layer in there. And you can see where my layers uh, start and stop. And it's not a smooth blend. I really like that. To me, that's what watercolor is all about. Being able to see where the water has done the work. I think it's quite attractive. Now the underbelly of the bird is really quite blue and like I said we don't have we don't have uh, white so we have to lighten our color up by using water. And my decision is next um, whether I'm going to stay with this dark blue or whether I'm going to go into this more of a sky blue and I think I'm going to pull the sky blue just to see what it looks like. It's very contrasting. It's quite bright. I'm going to add a lot of water but I still, it still might be a little bit bright, so maybe I'll take more of this mud color and I'll just temper. I'll just bring it down, bring the intensity or bring the hue down a little bit into more of a gray. And there we go. Now I'm going to just take my brush and I'm really just, again, dry brushing this on here. And it's almost like a shadow color. It's very light, it's very translucent. And it might actually look nice over the back of the bird just a little bit to give it that shadow color. And that will probably take a few more layers. We don't, we don't overwork it. We end up with this, you know, it's very kind of a fresh palette. Now our bird, um, if it was like a, an absolute sample sample and you didn't want anything around it, we could just leave it like it is and maybe you want to make some notes or something like that, like we talked about, having that little um, notation sheet for a little journal. However, if we wanted to go ahead and paint in a sky, the easiest way to paint in the sky is one more time to paint with clear water. Take your bigger brush. Try not to touch your bird just in case. We talked about the bleeding. I'm coming right up close to the bird, but not touching the bird. And I'm just going to work my way around like that. I can always come in later if I've got an awkward white line around there. I'm going to kind of 
drop in a horizon line, which where is where the land and the sky meets. I'm going to make it down low on my page. Very, very rarely is a horizon line ever in the middle of your page. If you're looking to create something that's completely artificial, then then do that. Put your art, put your horizon line right in the middle of the page. Otherwise, you know, keep it high or drop it low. I know for Kent County, as I talked about, it does seem a little bit like big sky country with such a flat landscape. So this is quite a big area. It's bigger than the cards or pieces of watercolor that you have. And so, but my paper is, you know, holding the water just fine. You can see the whole thing is kind of wet. You can see it puddling down towards the bottom there, creating a horizon line. The next thing I'm going to do is perhaps take this bright blue. Again, I find that just a little bit intense. I might just temper it with that color there. And I'm just going to let this flow over my page. And this is going to give me a nice, smooth uh, boost of color. It's going to happen fairly quickly. I'm going to help that water, help that paint. We often talk about the water doing the work, so this is an example of the water doing the work. We're just dropping that paint on there. And it won't be blotchy and it won't be dry as long as our page is nice and wet. Got kind of a nice thing happening around this bird here, which I might just keep. I'm going to bring that around the bottom there. And in between the legs, run over that actually. There we go. Now, if this water starts to collect and look really heavy, I'm going to take my Kleenex and I'm going to just. Uh, soak up some of that water so that it's not such a heavy line. And you can see we have kind of a nice gradient. Return to me for a minute. And then the next thing we can do is we can take the Kleenex and crumple it and create kind of a cloud effect. So I said the Kleenex works like uh, an eraser. And we can just kind of remove to create a naturalistic looking, you know, backdrop. Just like that. And one more time, you can let that dry and you can go back in and do that again and kind of gradually build that up to where you would like it to be. Yeah, looking pretty good. 